Hi, I'm Zach Northway from Flywheel Supply. Today I'm going to show you on a Model 92 Maytag engine how to check the coil for spark and then set the points and get your timing right so the engine will run. Every time I do an engine we do it in the same exact way to make sure we have good spark and good fire. It's the most important part of getting an engine running and we always do it first. Here we have just a barn fresh Maytag as we found it, missing a couple of parts but that's not a big deal. And the first thing to do is check the coil for continuity to know if the coil is even good. The easiest way to do that is to remove the flywheel nut here. You'll need a 15 16 wrench and loosen the nut up until it's flush with the outside edge of the crankshaft. Then stick your wrench in behind or a pry bar, hold some pressure, and then hit the nut out here. And as you can see, where there was a gap right in here, the gap is gone and the flywheel slid out. Now we'll finish removing the nut and the flywheel assembly will just slide off completely. I'm going to lay that to the side. We'll come back to it in a minute. The next thing to do is check the coil. There's two sides of the coil to check. We're going to take our standard digital multimeter here and we're going to check from plug wire here to ground. Anywhere on the motor is fine. I like to go right on the laminates. We have 6.26 K or 6,260 ohms. That's a good coil. You're going to get or notice several different readings depending on the exact coil. Maytag changed them a little bit over the years, but the idea is that we have continuity. If you show a coil with a reading that shows this, open or OL means open line, that's a defective coil. Pretty much as a rule of thumb, if you show continuity on your meter, the coil's good. If it shows open, it's bad. Now there's one more side to check, and we need to check from plug wire to the wire that runs to the points and condenser. Now as I just noticed in this particular engine we're working on, somebody has already mo removed the condenser from here. So the easy way to check on this, with, since the condenser is already unhooked, is just to isolate the points or open them so they're not touching anything and hook our wire to there. Again, the points have to be open and we have to unhook from the condenser. If you don't, the condenser will show you a false reading and it will show you ground. Now if we look at our meter again, we see we again have the same reading. They should match or very close. So it appears on our engine we're working on today, we have a good coil. The next thing we're going to do is set the timing. There's lots of debate on how to time a Maytag engine. I use this timing jig. It's simple and straightforward. Slide the timing jig over the end of the laminate to the coil as seen here. You want the jig to be flush with the bottom and follow the curvature here and held back. Then you want the points to fit in the V that is formed by the jig like so. There's a little bit of slack one way or the other, but just centered up so it looks appealing to the eye between here and here. Right in the center is usually a really good place to start. The next step in timing the engine actually has nothing to do with the engine, but it's the flywheel. We'll slide the engine back, and I'll bring the flywheel in. In here, you have two screws. The screw on the left, as we see it now, is spring-loaded. There's a brass knurled nut up here that sets the speed. A good default setting for this is a decent amount of tension on the spring. That'll get your engine running and running fast. You can always loosen it up to slow the engine later. But I hate to try to start an engine with it too loose and find out that all we did was had it so loose the engine wouldn't fire. So set a decent amount of tension for now, get your engine running, and then slowly loosen this up and let there be some slack on your spring and make it run slower. Now, this screw here sets the degree of fire of the engine. To set that, we'll need a gauge. Now I took a nail and pre-made it to be an inch and two hundred thousandths long. Just take a caliper and cut the point of a nail off and grind it until you're at an inch and two hundred thousandths as seen here. Now this little gauge will allow you to slide in here and adjust the points. And as you can see, these are way out of adjustment. Someone has also added an extra jam nut to the bottom here. So I'm going to remove this extra nut here, and then I'm going to loosen this bolt until the arm comes down and touches the top of my little gauge. I noticed a couple other problems with that governor and the flywheel we were using, so I switched the whole governor out. 
to this one here. You'll notice this governor is threaded all the way down on the screw. A few are, but most are not. But at any rate, now if I set my gauge in here, you'll notice that the gauge goes all the way from the bottom or touches on the, the collar here up to the edge of the bracket right there. And that's what we're looking for. So from here to here should be an inch and 200 thousandths. Now that that is set, we we'll, can turn our attention to the points. To set the points, we'll have to install the flywheel, but don't install the nut. Find where your shear key is located here, line it up with the shear key on your flywheel, and slide it on like so. Then, roll the flywheel until around till your points open. And if you look way down in there, you can now see the points are opened up. And right there, you can see the points are open. Now measure that gap with a feeler gauge and note if it's more than or less than 20 thousandths. Once you know what the gap is, you can slide the flywheel back off and adjust the points accordingly. To do that, we will adjust the stationary contact of the points. Once you know if the gap is more than or less than 20 thousandths, slide the flywheel back off like this and adjust the points to 20 thousandths. To do that, Loosen the stationary contact, this one right here. Loosen this small jam nut here and twist the point right here in or out to make the 20 thousandths. Do just a little bit at a time, leave the jam nut loose, slide the flywheel back on and check if it's at 20 thousandths yet. Once it is at your 20 thousandths of clearance, simply tighten the bottom jam nut and you should be good to go. If in adjusting the stationary contact you have to move the stationary contact excessively in or out beyond about the middle of the range then there's another way to adjust it. This should end up relatively in the middle if it's timed correctly so if you gotta move it way to one end or the other just leave it set about in the middle loosen this screw slightly right here until it's just barely loose take a flat tip screwdriver and twist this just slightly not very much a little does it and if you twist right here that'll push the points away which will narrow the gap so this bracket here going in that direction or to the left of the video will make the points gap open less every time they open and you can do it with the jig still on here or the timing jig still on here up like this to make sure this top corner doesn't move and as long as this stays in here get that points gap set to 20 thousandths by moving this or if you got to cheat a little by moving your bracket right here in or out again moving this bracket down or away from the oil catch ring will make the points gap narrower when they open set that to 20 thousandths tighten this screw make sure this one's still tight and you should be good to go now in the case of the engine we're working on we noticed when we took it apart somebody has robbed the condenser I'm going to install a new condenser and we'll see if we have spark. Here's a new condenser I've started to install. If you're putting one of our new condensers in, there's two screws in the back of your magneto plate here. One down here and one up in the corner which you just can't quite see. I always mount the condenser with the clamp to the top screw. If you go down here you got a chance that the flywheel counterweight and magnet will hit it when it comes around right here. So install it to the upper screw furthest into the center of the plate. And then the lead simply needs to run up here to this screw to make connection. Now for simplicity's sake, that's how we're going to do it for the video, just since we're doing a demonstration. But if I was doing this for an engine to make it run and, you know, keep it, then I would snip this end of the wire off of the coil right here and throw away this little jumper lead. Then I'd solder a couple inches of wire onto the coil wire here and then make that connection to here with a crimp on you know forked end to neaten that up so I would be getting rid of this old jumper that ran to the screw type or screw top type condenser but for simplicity's sake right now we're gonna leave it like this but do make sure that this is tucked out of the way or wrap it with some black tape because if this goes to ground you're not gonna get any fire at all and then obviously this wire needs tucked out of the way or we're gonna uh, catch it in the counterweight on the engine now I've put a tie strap on this to make sure this wire doesn't touch ground and I got the condenser wire neatened up so it's not going to get caught in anything moving. And then I paid a little attention up here to make sure where this connection is here. We don't want this terminal being able to touch ground or anything either as obviously that would keep the engine from running. 
Now one last final bit of preparation to make this run is we're going to clean the points. Now lots of people do lots of things to clean the points. I like to use my Dremel with a wire brush. Simply install a large stainless wire brush to the Dremel, open the points, and clean them like so. Once they're clean with the Dremel tool, I pull a shipping tag through to knock out the dust. Take a shipping tag or a you know, decent sized piece of paper, double it over if you need to, and pull it through like so. We'll polish them up a little bit and make sure that all the grit is removed from between the contacts. You'll be good to go. Now we can install the flywheel and see if we have spark. Now with the flywheel reinstalled, we'll check for spark. A good sparking engine should spark just from rolling the flywheel by hand. Roll it quickly and you should get plenty of blue spark. Any other color of spark is a sign of a weak coil or something improperly adjusted. And there you have it. Now with the spark all properly adjusted, all that's left is to tackle the fuel system and the engine should be running. I hope that you've enjoyed the video today. If you want to learn more about Maytags, you're welcome to call us for technical support. And we have a five disc DVD series on how to rebuild a Model 92 engine. A lot of it applies to the Model 72 and the 82 as well. That's available online on our website and by calling Flywheel Supply at 712-562-6011. Thanks for watching.